Are you thinking about making the transition into the tech industry? If you are, I'm sure you have a ton of questions about the process, about what you should learn, and about where do you even start. So I've interviewed three brilliant self-taught programmers on the topic. All of these women have had a different career path in mind, but then they fell in love with programming and decided to make a transition into tech. You will hear from Eden, from Kellen and Alex and their paths into tech, their career paths have been fascinating and they have so much goodness to share. So let's get into the interview. I'm a software engineer at an insure tech startup called Lemonade. I do backend engineering on our customer facing product. So if you're a policyholder or customer of ours, you've touched things that I've helped build. So that's pretty cool. My name is Kelly. I am a software developer and I'm going to working at Frontier with React. To start off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey through Lambda, which was an online boot camp. And I currently am still working for them as a section lead. So as a section lead, I'm over students and I just make sure that they understand the core curriculum and that they're on the right track, that they're turning in their module assignments. I do plenty of one-on-ones to make sure that they're learning and absorbing everything that they need to know about iOS. Yeah, I used to be a teacher, but about five years ago, I left the classrooms and I started um, working in tech companies. Since then, I have been fascinated with the idea of using software to solve practical problems. And I found out that programming includes all my passions, like creativity, organization, logical thinking, and this uh, endless puzzle that I love to solve. In addition to that, I strongly believe in the power of programming to change and improve the life of people around the world. So uh, last year, I decided to focus in build my career as a, soft, as a software developer. Before getting into tech, I was really in an entrepreneurial spirit type place. Um, I started a small company called Wrapped Fitness App because I was a personal trainer at the time. Um, and this app was pretty much designed to bridge the gap between clients and trainers on an online platform so that there was no requirement to go to the gym for custom fitness. That's what really got me into iOS development. So as I wanted to produce this app, I just fell in love with the process of design, development, execution, and that's what led me to Lambda School. Before I got into tech, I was actually very pre-med. I studied neuroscience at the University of Michigan and did biomedical research for four years, the whole thing. Long story short, I took the MCAT and was applying to med schools. And eventually in the application, they asked, you know, why do you want to be a doctor? And I was like, that's a great question. <laughs> Let me think about that. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, wait, I don't think this is what I want. Um, so before I abandoned my lifelong dream, I took a year off and went to a new country. Um, it's how I ended up in Israel and that was five years ago and I've been here ever since. But taking that year off allowed me to explore things that I was curious about that I had never looked into before or had the time. And one of those was programming. Um, my brother is a computer engineer and I saw him doing all these things and he would show me, you know, his projects and I was really impressed, but it was so beyond me. I, I didn't understand it, but because I didn't understand it at all, I was really curious to know more. And so during this year, I took the time uh, when I wasn't working to teach myself programming. And the more I got into it, the more I was like, wait, this is, you know, something I kind of have a feel for and I want to explore more. So I did a coding boot camp for five months and it was a full stack program. I didn't know what that meant before I started. My brother tried to explain it to me. I still didn't get it. Um, but by the end, I ended up getting a job at the company I'm at now, Lemonade, 
as a front end engineer. And I didn't even, when I started working, I didn't even really know what it meant to work every day as a software engineer. So I kind of just dove in head first and that's how I got where I am today. My biggest challenge through Lambda School was believing in myself. There was a huge gap between what I thought I was capable of versus what my actual capabilities are. Once I was able to develop some self-confidence and really set goals and orient myself to believe that I could do it, it became a little easier. Of course, there are always challenges in development, but that was definitely the biggest one I faced through school. The biggest challenge was to get out of my comfort zone. I always, I was always more involved with human sciences and what it was difficult for me understand some uh, concepts of programming. So I gave up sometimes at the beginning. And if I, I could go back in time and do, and do something different, differently, I would have uh, pushed myself hard, harder. I would not have given up and I would have believed that I could, I could do it. There have been a lot of challenges. Um, one started at the beginning of my journey when we first learned for loops and, or the whole concept of loops, and I couldn't get it. I didn't understand it. I was starting to doubt myself, doubt if, you know, coding was right for me, if, uh, you know, this would ever work out. And eventually I pushed through and I got it. And now I can't even understand how I didn't get it before. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't let uh, it freak you out when you first start learning to code because it's a completely different way of thinking and um, don't compare yourself to others because I came in with that pre-med sort of competitive mentality and I think it just made me really down on myself um, and hard on myself when I didn't need to be and everyone gets things at their own pace um, and just keep pushing. And um, another big challenge was that when I first started at my job, I was the only female on the entire engineering team. Um, and not only that, I was the youngest by far. Everyone seemed to be, you know, very senior handpicked from other companies. So I was definitely the only junior there um, among a lot of other differences. And it was really tough. Yeah, not gonna lie. <laughs> But yeah, it made me a lot stronger. And another big challenge that came along with that was a lot of imposter syndrome. <laughs> Felt that a lot, still feel that even today. But would I change anything? I think maybe I would change, I wouldn't change my degree. I love studying neuroscience. Um, I think I would change how hard I was on myself and how for so long, for the first few years at my job, I was always trying to prove myself. And I think that put a lot of unnecessary pressure on myself um, and it wasn't good. <laughs> and I think if I was easier on myself, I think it would have helped me gain that confidence faster. Um, but honestly, would I change anything about my experience? Not really because uh, as cheesy as it sounds, like it, it got me to where I am today and I'm really happy and, and proud of that. I believe that anyone can get into tech. I am an example of that. I, I didn't fit the stereotype. I had no experience and I started at almost 30. But of course, you will need a lot of commitment and dedication. Yes and no. I think everyone should definitely try tech, try some kind of technical career, explore programming 110%, like please try it. Um, I, if I hadn't tried it, I, I wouldn't be here now. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. So you really never know. Um, but is it for everyone? No, just like being a doctor or a lawyer or 
teacher isn't for everyone. Um, so everyone should definitely explore it. But is it for everyone? No, and that's okay. I 1000% believe that anyone can go into tech. If you have the drive and you have the want to, there's literally no holding you back. It's an amazing career choice and I wouldn't have done anything differently. For anyone who's thinking of transitioning into tech like I did, um, I have lots of advice. But I guess one thing would be um, to not compare yourself to others. It's not a race, it really isn't. Um, and it doesn't matter how quickly or slowly you're catching on to some concepts. All that matters at the end of the day is that you can keep pushing forward, you're challenging yourself and always learning new things. So don't be hard on yourself and also don't get discouraged um, because programming is a completely different way of thinking. And I think people underestimate that. And so when you're first starting out, things are gonna be, things are gonna be hard. <laughs> and it's not because you can't do them or you know it's too hard, it's just that it's hard and you'll learn and you'll get through it and um and you'll be challenged and and learn from those experiences um but don't let it scare you away from continuing on learning programming it's just hard and and that's what you signed up for you wanted a challenge and uh so you're in the right place the other thing i would say is don't be afraid to Google things. Like, please Google everything. Whether you have 10 years of experience or 10 minutes of experience, it doesn't matter. It's not cheating if you Google things. Everyone does it. It's part of the job. I would even say, like I joke with my friends, that I'm a professional Googler, but I, it's not really a joke. Like, <laughs> I am. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, figuring things out, knowing that, you're gonna get a problem that you've never seen before. You don't know how to deal with it, but that's fine. You'll think about it based on past experiences or you'll Google it <laughs> and that's how it works. So when I first started, I was taking a CS50, like Harvard's CS50 course online. And the first assignment, they uh, gave us this Python uh, exercise and I promised myself I would give myself two weeks to like go at it full force, not Google anything. And that was such a waste of time <laughs> because in the end, after two weeks of still not getting it, I Googled the answer and I was like, wait, they didn't teach us that in class or I didn't know we could use that. And that's the whole point. Like they can't teach you everything, all the different tools you can use. So that's why you have Google. So they teach you the basics and, you know, you have to sort of take that and go for it. There's nothing that's out of bounds or, oh, we haven't gotten to that unit yet. I can't use this. Like, no, you can use everything and anything that's out there. Um, be creative, have fun and be resourceful. So use everything that you can to help yourself. And there, that is not cheating. My advice for those who are thinking about making a transition into tech is be consistent. Uh, I only started to improve when I dedicate, my, dedicate myself every day. For me, this happened when I did the 100 days of code challenge and I created a commitment and I shared, shared my progress with the community every day and this gave me a lot of motivation. Uh, you, you don't want to if you don't want, you don't need to do any challenges, but at least keep it the consistency. Take it like 50 minute, minutes a day, every day to learn it. And with time, you see a great uh, progress and this you give a lot of motivation to keep you moving forward. For anyone thinking about making the transition to tech, I cannot say enough about the community that is behind you and the support that you have. Before I was in tech, I never had the kind of support and love and passion behind me that I do now. I can get on any social media and find a million people that are saying amazing things about other developers. And I think that that is what 
truly makes the tech community amazing. So if you are thinking about transitioning and you love people that are supportive, encouraging, and loving, then make the leap and we'll be right here waiting. Thank you so much, Eden, Kellen, and Alex for sharing your experiences and your advice. Make sure that you follow these wonderful ladies on social media because they are sharing so much value on a regular basis. I hope this was helpful for your decision-making process. Let me know in the comments below what industry you're trying to transition out of and watch out for next week's video where I will interview another three badass self-taught programmers on their learning process. Subscribe to my channel not to miss that video. Like this video if you've enjoyed it and share it with a friend who is also thinking about making the transition into the tech industry. And we can also be friends on other social media. You can find me as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.